Hi guys and welcome back to another 5 minutes with Drone Mesh where I show you the basics of setting up a quadcopter and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at iBus and I'm going to be showing you how to set it up in the beta flight configuration and how to wire it and what to avoid and some of the terms you need to understand as fast as possible. So before we begin. Uh, there's something called an inverted signal and an uninverted signal. Now these talk, our IBUS protocol receivers talk on a uninverted signal and SBUS talks inverted. So that's very important to take that into consideration because that will sometimes cause you a lot of problems if you don't know that. So these talk uninverted, which means they will run on any pin other than the SBUS pin on the F4 flight controllers because it has a special IC to make it work. So if you by any chance, by mistake, happen to set this up on the SBUS, the, you haven't set, set up the IBUS on an SBUS pad, it'll never work. All right, so that's out of the way. Now here I have two examples. Here's a flight controller which says IBUS, SBUS, sorry. SBUS is right there. So what you want to do is you want to completely avoid that pad, like completely avoid that pad or it'll never work. So that's one thing. So this one's pretty nice. It already shows us where the SBUS and what pad to avoid. This one is a different story. It doesn't have that. It has SP, but that's not SBUS. This one usually, well, most of it, you can actually check which pad is for SBUS on the specification of every flight controller. This one, for example, is on RX3. So what we want to do is we want to completely avoid RX3. Simple, right? Yes, very simple. So let's put this guy to the side. Let's come back to this guy. So first thing we need to do, obviously, both of these work exactly the same and can be wired exactly the same. Now, first thing you want to do is you want to find a 5 volt and ground because both of these take 5 volts only. So let's first find a 5 volt and ground. Any 5 volt and ground will do. Here's a 5 volt. We're going to take this 5 volt right there and we're going to take that ground right there. So that's all set and done. Now we powered up this guy. We'll solder him into place right now. Now, where would I put the IBUS pad? Now, this is very important. Like I mentioned, you have to avoid the S bus and you have to know each flight controller has an S bus pad. So you want to avoid the S bus pad. Now, after you do that, where the heck would we put it? Well, there's something called UARTs and they consider them as basically USBs to your flight controller. Very simple. Now, every UART has two pads. So for example, UART1 will have so RX1 and a TX1. Okay, so that would mean USB1, for example. All right, simple. So what does the R stand for or what does the T stand for? Well, R is for receive. To re so, so for the flight controller to receive something, it would have to, the data has to go to the R. Now for the flight controller to talk something, to transmit something, it'll have, the T would have to go to that thing that it has to transmit something to. So what we want now is we want the receive. Why? Because we want the receiver to tell the flight controller what to do. We don't care what the flight controller wants to tell the receiver right now because all we need to do is control our quadcopter. So the IBUS would go on an RX pad, any RX pad as long as it's not for an S bus. So here, if we set it up on RX1, then it should be very simple. So let me go ahead and solder this into place, show it to you, and we jump into beta flight. All right, guys, so now they're soldered into place. Now, as you can tell here, we have RX1, which is the IBUS uh, wire. We'll go to RX1, which will be UART1 in the beta flight. And we'll take a look at that right now. And the black wire is ground. You can't really see that anymore, but it says GND. So that's the black wire. And this is 5 volt and it's right there. And that's it. So it's very simple. Now, and again, how did I know which one's which? It's because here we have, look, this IBUS ground and that leaves 5 volt in the middle. And they're the correct color coded. So that's perfect. Next thing to do is to power these up and uh, obviously bind it. Now, some of these will not power up the receiver from USB, so don't worry. So some of them will need you know, to have the battery connected. So you would solder up a battery, connect it, bind it. After you make sure you bind it, I'll leave another video or there's many videos online show you how to bind these are very simple. So you bind it and then let's jump into the beta flight configuration. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started here. So what you want to do is you want to go to connect and then you want to go to the ports tab. It's very important you go to the ports tab first. And here are the USBs I was talking about. UART 1, UART 2, 3, 4, 5. Some will be up to 3, some will be. Just don't touch the USB one, the first one. So here we have UART 1. And what you want to do is you want to keep this off. You want to keep everything the same way I have it right here, except you want to enable this serial RX. Now I want to turn this one off. If there's any other one that is currently turned on, Turn it off. 
All right, so that's all set and done. What I wanna do next is save and reboot. So let's go ahead and save and reboot. All right, now we need to go to configuration and you wanna scroll down until you see here, serial based receivers. Now this could be like this, but make sure you have serial based receivers chosen and you see SBUS, but we're not using SBUS. We need to go to IBUS and now we save and reboot and allow that to reboot, okay. Then we go to our receivers. If it does this, then just disconnect and then connect. And then we go to receivers and let's double check our receiver. Perfect. That's it. Everything is working. It's just that simple. All you have to do is just avoid the S bus pad at all costs and you're good to go. And we should be complete here. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope it helped someone out there. Uh, please consider joining my Patreon. That'll greatly support the channel. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And you could always use the affiliate links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.